I cannot believe you're making me do this. I cannot believe I have to defend a Netflix J-Lo movie. What are you people thinking? What's the problem here? I don't understand. That's right. We're going to talk about the Jennifer Lopez Netflix movie Atlas. I am confused. I watched this movie and I do not understand the hate for it. I just I just don't get it. I am I'm I'm really confused here. Maybe somebody can explain it to me. There's a lot of people really big mad about this and we're going to listen to some of what they have to say and then I I feel like I have some valid points to make. In fact, by the end of this, you're probably going to agree with me that this is not the worst science fiction movie of the year. And and it's just, it's fine. It's not great. I am not saying that this is a great movie by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not even saying it's a good movie. I'm just saying it's fine. It's an okay two hours of your time. If you watch it on Netflix, you're fine. You didn't spend any money other than your monthly subscription. And this was part of it anyway. You're not going to be upset if you watch this. And I've talked to several people out in the street. And they're all like, oh yeah, I watched that movie. It was all right. It was, not, it was great. It was fine. So, yeah, that's right. I am the man you may know, Z, from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And I am going to... This is going to be controversial, I guess, because I cannot believe I have to do this. I have to defend Jennifer Lopez. This is bananas. Let's start with Penguin Zero. That's right, Charlie from Moist Critical. And he is big man about this. I do not understand why he even compliments the mech battle scenes in the end. But for some reason, he hates this movie, and and I am not sure why. Maybe I I have a I have a sneaking suspicion, but we'll we'll see. I'm not a happy camper. I didn't go into this expecting a modern masterpiece, but I expected to at least be entertained with some mindless sci-fi. And speaking of mindless, the- I just want to point out too, like the critic, he agrees with the critics that have it at 17%. The audience is at 53%. I'm telling you right now, this is not like a failure of a movie. This is not a movie where you sit back and you go, I can't believe this plot hole, and I can't believe that plot hole, and I can't believe how bad this was or that was. I watched the trailer reaction with Nerd Roddick, and maybe because my expectations were so low, because they ripped it and I thought it was hilariously bad looking, it turned out to be more interesting than I thought it would be. Mildly interesting. I am not saying that this is a great movie, but I didn't hate it. The audience scores on Rotten Tomatoes continue to make me sick to my stomach. How could 53% of people that suffered this torture actually enjoy it to any capacity? You enjoyed like it, being Charlie. excited when you step on a rusty nail barefoot. It's just painful. It's a complete waste of two hours. And this is coming from someone who really appreciates bad films. This is the dude who watched Pooh, Blood, and Honey. And he's like, this is a waste of time. And I just want to point out as well, we don't have that many mech suit movies, right? How many live action mech suit movies? I'm going to make a point here, and I think you're going to agree with me by the end. I think there is this fine, beautiful line where a movie is objectively horrible, and it is so bad that it becomes entertaining. Just absolutely immaculate, like Moonfall. But Atlas never crosses this so bad it's good line. The only line Atlas crosses is the one between my butt cheeks. It's shit. So let's go ahead and break. So he's going to break it down. Essentially, the movie is, um, for those of you who are not aware, Jennifer Lopez is a consultant. She is like an AI expert. She's supposed to be really smart. They they show it in one scene, which, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. And essentially, there was an AI. The AI decided to turn on humanity. It tried to eliminate all of humanity. And then was turned you know was unsuccessful and fled right fled to another galaxy or some some nonsense and then they decide to hunt it down and destroy it before it can come back and do any more damage and that's where Jennifer Lopez has been brought in you know she really she has a personal connection to this AI she wants to see it through to the end she wants to end it and destroy it personal vendetta and then she goes on a mission, she's not trained, she's not a fighter, and then due to circumstances, and I don't think this is a spoiler, is she ends up piloting a mech suit so that she can try to accomplish this mission. We have so few mech suit movies, live action ones, 
that you would bury this one just proves we're never going to get a live action Gundam. We're never going to get live action anything interesting. The, the best I can think of off the top of my head is Pacific Rim. We're going to go through a list, though, because I think it's important that we understand this. And then someone else who I really like, Chris Gore, as a film critic. I think he's got it wrong. I think he's completely off base here. He also buries this movie. We're going to listen to what he has to say. This is terrible. Yeah, I'm trying to see if we... the uh, One of the worst I, things I've seen this year. Yeah. And I want to point out, he is wrong. Chris Gore, and I, I think Chris Gore is a great, great film critic. I love Film Threat. He is wrong because... And I have, I have the trump card. You're not paying attention, Chris. I have the trump card. It's in my pocket. I'm going to show everybody here, and I'm going to prove you wrong. It's it's the script. The script. I want an apology. The actually, script is so bad, and the situations are so bad. It's like Jennifer Lopez, AI, overdone special effects, forgettable music, diversity. The music is forgettable. Oh, I, I want when you hear. I want you to hear this part. Diversity, diversity, like it just is god awful on every. What diversity? There's exactly one scene that has like diversity in it, and I hate this. I'm, I'm getting tired of it, and I fought about the critical drinker doing it. I'm gonna fight Chris Gore about it. Stop looking for my diversity in every single. Sing- I know the message is there, but it's not in everything. There's one scene where there's like female uh, mech pilots, and it's just not that big of a deal. They're in one scene. The majority of this movie is Jennifer Lopez by herself in a mech suit trying to act with nothing. She's literally acting with a disembodied voice. And I think she actually pulls it off. In fact, this is not her first foray into into sci-fi. She did another movie, which I highly recommend, which is Cell. Check it out. It's like a serial killer thriller with this like cool sci-fi theme to it. Definitely recommend it. Uh, There's a bunch of famous people in it. Cannot remember their names off the top of my head, but I, I promise you, you're probably going to like it. It's very interesting, and she's super smoking in it. But I just think this diversity, I'm tired of this argument because guess what? Hollywood has seen that if they keep making diversity movies, they're failing. And this just, it's, it's just not that bad. Every level. And it rips off so many things. It rips off, you know, Avatar. Uh, it rips off, like, Aliens. It rips, it rips off, off entirely it, 10 minutes of aliens where Ripley's in a she's in a, a glorified forklift is what she's in and she doesn't talk to it. So it's not really I'm not going to say that's like a mech suit, you know, maybe it's like a prototype whatever. Like come on man. You know, just it's it, everything it's like it's like we're going to put things in a blender, all, you know, famous sci-fi tropes, put it on puree and you get this movie. So do not see Atlas unless it's a joke. And I just, I, I, they, they do make the point. Both of them said that maybe the, this script seems like it was written by AI. I don't necessarily disagree with it. I am not saying that this is a great movie. It's like a C minus. It's like a seventy two percent maybe. Like if you're gonna go to school, you're just gonna you're gonna squeak by. Maybe you don't get a D because it's a little more entertaining than that. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a great movie, but these guys are like, it's the worst movie of the year. I hate this so much. Well, guess what? On Netflix, it's like it's number one. It's doing fine. You got to remember, J-Lo, I think, signed some sort of multi-movie deal with Netflix because she put out Mother, which was fine. It wasn't great. Same thing. It's it's mildly entertaining. I don't think I gave it 100%. I might have been editing while I was on my phone or editing and doing stuff while I was watching it. It's fine. It's fine. It's directed by uh, Brad Payton, who did Rampage and San Andreas. I'm not going to say those are good movies. In fact, Rampage is worse than this. San Andreas maybe is a little bit better. I don't don't know. It's just, it's like a popcorn flick. I, you know, if I had a thing of popcorn i would have been like oh this is fine simu lu who i don't even think is that great of an actor although he's pretty okay in barbie terrible in shang chi is fine he was kind of he was all right i mean i don't know what his he has no character motivation or anything like that but he was fine you can't say he was bad in it uh so it even it stars sterling k brown he's great mark strong is in like two 
two scenes. So it again, it's ju- it was just okay. It's not it's not great. It's not bad. It's it's just kind of float. It's like un- it's a Netflix movie. You you don't expect that much, and you're not getting a lot. But it's it's gonna pass the time, and it's fine. You're not gonna freak out about it. So okay, let's just let's look at this one. Here's what we have in live action mech suit movies, and maybe this is number one. But Edge of Tomorrow, all right, Tom Cruise Edge of Tomorrow, maybe the best mech suit movie besides Pacific Rim that I can think of, if Pacific Rim counts, right? Uh, we're talking about Amazing Spider-Man 2 with the Rhino. No, no, that's garbage. It was in for 32 seconds. Uh, we've got the Lego movie. Yeah, no thanks. We've got Aliens, 1986. Really, again, how, how much of the movie is that? This is a mech suit movie. It's specifically about, about mech suits and AI and the relationship. And I'm not saying it's deep. I'm not saying it's even great. It's just... We don't get any of these movies, so let's not kill it for it being there. Ambushers, 1967. Okie dokie. Avatar, I guess. Like, sure. I don't really, I didn't think of that as a mech suit movie. District 9 has a great mech suit scene. Better than this movie, but it's still, you know what I'm saying? This was not the focus of it. Elysium, I barely, no, that doesn't count. Sorry. Robocop, not a mech suit. Robocop is a cyborg. Pacific Rim, 100%. One of my, I love that movie. Uh, Robot Jocks. I, I've seen this. I, I, I do like it. It is cheesy as all get out, but I still enjoy it. Mech suit movie. You've never seen it. The Wolverine doesn't count. Nope. That's not a mech suit. Uh, Iron Man. Really? I don't know if I count that as a mech suit. I mean, I guess it does, but it not in the way. We're not talking about like, I don't know. It's different. It's different. Matrix Evolutions. Come on, people. That's not even a mech suit movie. It's barely even a movie. G- no, G.I. Joe does not count. And Star Kid. Yeah, see, now we're just stretching things. This is, if you wanted to see like a Gundam movie, this is what you need to see something like this be successful, right? I feel like I'm talking too long about this. But these these guys, everybody hates, like everybody's hating on it. And I'm telling you, the people in the streets are like, it's fine. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It's like Cloverfield Lane, 12 Cloverfield Lane. It was fine. Is it a great movie? No. It, it Was it worth watching? Sure. Why not? It's not a great movie. Barely a Cloverfield movie. But at least this is a mech suit movie. And here is why it's not the best sci-fi movie or the worst sci-fi movie of the year. It's very simple. All you have to say is Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. That's it. And I, I cannot even believe that this has probably the same critic and audience score of 15% and 49%. Charlie showed it was 17% and 51% or something like that. I think it has fallen a little bit. Rebel Moon Bar 2 is nearly incomprehensible in how dumb and poorly written that movie is. I'm still fighting over Wheat Man, which no other critic has ever talked about, is the Wheat Man who, in case you don't remember, they were giving out flags, and there was a guy who already had a flag who signified that he was great at wheat. And he even gets a scene where he gets killed and kicked off of a plane, and they don't even have his background story. Maybe in the... I I guess I have to watch the extended version of this just to see the, the backstory of Wheat Man. But this is one of the worst movies I have ever seen. And I I was a big... I can't even believe I'm going to admit this uh, anymore. But I was a big Zack Snyder guy. I was in his corner. I was fighting the good fight about Zack Snyder. I was a Snyderverse guy. And now I'm just like, this guy is completely incompetent. He could direct, but and he can cast. But do not let him do anything else. He cannot be the DP. He even said... If he if he was the if anybody else was the director of photography they would be fired because of how incompetent he is he said that himself he's insane and he has he's got so much smoke going up his keister it's it's ridiculous anyway I think I just won that's my trump card Rebel Moon Part Two Scar Giver worst sci fi sci fi movie of the year please fight with me in the comments about this. Tell me I'm wrong. I want an apology from Charlie and from Chris Gore because they're both off their rockers if they think that this dumb Atlas movie is anywhere near as bad as Rebel Moon. Please tell me in the comments below. I think I made a pretty solid argument here. 
I'm going to add both of them. They'll both probably, uh, you know, they're going to cower in their corners because they can't respond to this insanely powerful argument that I'm bringing. Be sure to check out our podcast. It is on iTunes, and I think it's also on YouTube as a podcast. Who knew? You can also check it out. There's a live stream of that, 7.30 p.m. Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Join the channel. Contribute. Help us out. We love all y'all. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Powerful arguments. I am on to the next one.